All I want to do is figure out how I can change everybody's lives from this point on. Using all the knowledge I've consumed, all of these horrible paths I've taken, all these paths I've taken, I want all that knowledge to lead you guys to the right fucking direction. Let's not waste any more time. Y'all know we about to take a trip to the cosmos, to outer space, with a man who's been killing it, killing it. He's been all around the country doing events, putting out crazy content with his leaf blower and shit, just killing it. 13,000 YouTube subscribers. He's got all kinds of educational grow videos and, and just... The content is amazing. He's fucking funny. He's down to earth. He's fucking... Obviously, y'all know he's dope because you're all here for him. So let me stop fluffing this shit <laughs> and bring out the man. He is Astro, untrained astronaut, my man. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, dude? How we doing? Not bad. How are you? Whoa. Oh, all right. Can you hear me okay now? Oh yeah, okay. You got a, oh, you got a fancy fucking setup. Kinda, kinda. I just this is a clamp for my cameras. I just put it on here so it swivels more. You know, I get more reach out of it that way. I dig it. Yo, what is up, everybody? Thank you for showing up. I really appreciate that, dude. We got all sorts of fucking people. Death Slayer, Matt Pierce. Oh my god, we got root nerds in here. Can Alicia. So many people here to see you. Uh, slow poke. What's up, buddy? So how are we doing? I heard you were talking about a two by four or a three by three. Listen, this yeah. has been the ongoing. This There's no the debate. You don't need it any longer. I've got an extra gorilla tent. I got two two by four gorilla tents. My dad one day is like, hey, do you want this tent? I was like, yeah, how much you want? He's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, all right, cool. So I took it. Really didn't have too much of a purpose for it. It's kind of just sitting there. Why don't you go ahead and take it and see what you can't do with it? Yeah. You're talking to me? Yeah. You want me to take the gorilla tent? <laughs> yeah, you want to have it? Like oh, I'm not. Shit. I mean, I won't say no. Okay. No, oh, that's incredible. Yeah, that's let's what. Get you, let's get you going. What the that's fuck? Not yeah. Starting up right now. Wow. Yeah, you no, got me got you. Damn, man. Damn. Well, I gotta say thank you. That's very generous of you. Well, dude, not a problem. Like I said, it was like you know, my dad was like, "Hey, I don't have room for it," and blah blah. I got a good deal on it. It's a gorilla. You know, or I think it's a pro light series and it works really, really well. It's just I got clone domes in there, but why? You know, so I can I'm have just, that area. I was thinking about removing that and putting something more, I don't know, adequate for that environment. You know, I have a large space down there to fit even more tents. So why see, not? that's what I'm jealous about. I see all these people talking about they have all these tents. They have the like five, six tents is loaded up. And I'm like, where do you have the space? That's what I like. I just feel yeah. like. I, I could never. I would love to. Don't get me wrong. But I, I, I let I take off my entire. I need a basement. That's where I'm fucking up. I don't have the basement here. That's what I need. A full fledged fucking basement lined up, ready to go. Oh boy, they help. That well, would I mean, help. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, I'm just that would help. I'm just agreeing with you. Like it would make a huge difference. But when you have when you're tight with space, it's fine. Like, well, what do I do for? I got like I can only really fit efficiently up to a three by three. Could I do? Whoa. I know, right? Whoa. <laughs> I could do technically a four by four if I wanted to in here, but that, of course, it's going to be tight. It's tight. And I don't want to make the room that's already small uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like I got to do one or the other. So it's always the big thing. It's like, which one am I going to do? And I'm, I'm like I said, it, incapable. So you just really helped solve uh, a, a month of. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I could. Yeah. Thank you. Are you a dabber? Are you a dabber? Of course I'm a dabber, good sir. I, I have this thing in front of me, and I'm dying to do one. Oh, yeah? So I, I would love to do a dab with you. Okay. Well, my dab rig is filthy, and I'm embarrassed Ooh. to show it. My other one's Ooh. inside, but what I can do is I got this big three-foot bong next to me that is completely loaded with, like, hash, but I'll clear it out and put, like, 3.5 grams of hash in there and nail it with you. What? Oh, yeah, it'll God. get weird. Like, I love it, man. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a that's a question that I'll always never say no to. I mean, we need that. It's not that big, but it's ewy. I got like a couple of them. I got this one right, and it's um it's a VIP. I don't know if you can hear me too well in this position. I got you. I can hear you. But uh, it's funny how I got it because like it's like it's worth like a thousand dollars, right? And I got it for well, the dude only owed me less than that, but like. 
I don't know. He was just not copping the money. And so I kicked his door in and we took his TV off his wall. And we took what? that from him. Yeah. And we're still cool to this day, though, because he was being a little fuck about it. And he admitted it. But yeah, I got the piece out of it. It's over here. It's a VIP glass. I think it's worth like a grand, bro. Like that's my community one. Like that's what everybody else uses. Cause you know how people don't know how to take dabs properly. Right. And they get it of all course. fucking dirty. So they already fucked that one up and I figured, fuck it. You know what? I'll let them use that. Oh, I'm zoomed in. Hold on. I said, fuck it. I'll let them use that one and then I'll get my own. So I bought a different one that was smaller and I like it a lot. So. So is a three footer like your daily go, like your daily use? Uh, I smoke about 10 blunts a day. I smoke over an ounce, ounce and a half. Blunts a day? Yeah, dude, I smoke like an ounce and a half a, a fucking day. So it's like it's it's like six grand a month somewhere on okay, there. So I, let me ask you this. Let me stop you right there. Do you smoke that much because you have to make the content? Right? Because that I don't usually no, making content no, requires. I was, bro, I was doing this shit way before this shit, bro. Like <laughs> 50 fucking pounds laying on the floor wasn't shit to me back then. You know what I mean? That was way back. Allegedly. So I just, you know, when you have it, you know, it's kind of different. And now as a grower, and I consume it and I see the value in the product. I see that it's medicinal and I'm on a whole different plane than where I was back then. You know what I mean? I was about to hustle in that time. And then I realized just how powerful weed was. And so I kind of flipped the table on what I was doing and what direction I was going. I said, fuck it. Nah, dude, I want to fucking help people with this shit. Like I've made my, you know, part and, uh, allegedly, as I said, definitely, definitely. But, um, you guys get it, man. Weed is the healing motherfucker. I mean, exactly. I get nervous about this shit still, you know, and I'm about to smoke a bowl of hash and it's going to help me with that shit because that's what it fucking does, bro. Like, the shit heals. <laughs> You're going to drop a 3-5 in the bong. Of yeah. Hash. Straight hash. <laughs> Fuck, man. You are such a G. No, nah, dude, like, I'm just trying to get places, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're about to go to outer space together, man. I mean, I'm going to do, do a little dab with you. Yeah, not three and a half grams by any means, you know, because that that light will require me ending the show early. Oh but no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's nothing like a dick measure contest, bro. When I started smoking <laughs> weed, I thought I was like, oh my god, I was so scared. Like I threw up before on weed, but you know where all this changed is because I was moving shit, but I wasn't even smoking really. All these motherfuckers were telling me. They're like, yo, dude, you're fucking saving my life, and blah blah blah. And I'm like, I ain't a fucking hero, bro. I'm slinging shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Like the thing that I grew to learn was these people were quitting things like heroin and opiates. And how are they getting all these benefits and doing all these big major things? And I'm not having nothing but panic attacks when I smoke it. Well, it just depends on how you look at things and what skeletons you have in your closet. And I learned with due time, I was able to control this altered state that I had become uh, accustomed to anymore. Like I say, like I smoke a lot, obviously, but at the beginning, it wasn't that way. So the more you build a tolerance, the more medicine that you could find within it, obviously there's a line where you're just indulging. Obviously that's where I seem to have been for quite some time, but that did make its word to get where I need to be medicinally. I right. have to smoke quite a bit and that's not a path I would choose unless you're somebody who's moving away. You don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Nothing matters. Like you can smoke an ounce a day, like nothing. So that shit don't make a fuck. But, uh, with that tolerance, you know, a lot of people bongs are what I see as like the entryway into it because like it, now, for instance, the reason I have this one right here, Jamal, it's just always been his name. He's my fucking Jamal. homie right here. Like, he gets shit done. Like, it, that's the greatest thing. Like, you can measure it, right? Like, if I fill this thing up halfway, I know it. if I hit it that bong height on whichever strain, what the high was on the prior strain, you know what I mean? Like, you could feel the difference, and it's a way of to measure it. But over time, you'll start getting taller and taller to where the bet. Like, if I'm going to smoke this... We play war like we pass this back and forth and literally don't stop until like the bulls out. You know what I mean? With this hash shit like it's fun. But like you get that point over time. It's just before my knee would kill me all the time. My back would kill me all the time before I couldn't sleep. Like I really I could sleep so much better. And that's the reason I got all like fucking like up in my own ass about weed like wow this is really healing people is the PTSD trauma shit like that and how it actually helped with all of it. So I thought it was dope as fuck. I was like, all right, cool. But so where would you say that where does where does the PTSD come from? If you don't want me asking. Oh, it's 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 one of those things like um it's maybe a different time. It, I, I seen some murders happen when I was younger and shit. It was yeah, it was, it was shitty. Um you sounded like you were deep in the game, man. Uh no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Never affiliated. Not, not like a gang. I don't mean like that. I just meant like you were out there. You were sliding in. You were moving. You were, you know, do what you had to do. 
out there and probably you probably i feel like you would have seen some shit doing that uh no sir okay all right fair enough fair enough so how did that how did that work out then so how does that how did the ptsd see the murders where, where did that all come from was it just the upbringing was it the location you were in um some of it i can't talk on and other okay. is uh when i was 11 years old i watched a guy get um we'll, we'll we'll save that one i can't i thought i was somewhere better and able to do all this stuff but i get really uh in my own head over time so i stopped talking about it until i could figure out a way to how to explain you know yeah no uh, i don't i'm not trying to push it i'm sorry no no you're good you're good, you're good. it's just it, uh, i was an 11 year old you know what i mean and uh i was uh i just i happened to go outside at the wrong time you I know what i mean you. yeah so, wrong place yeah. wrong time yeah it, it, it's what fucked me up for the longest and so um basically you know skimming lightly over it i could do pretty easily it, it fucked me up for a good minute and uh it took a lot of head work i learned for me the thing that differed me from all these people who were saying that i was their hero and it's medicinally helping was the skeletons in my closet were this extremely fucked up ptsd like the pinnacle of what I could ever fucking have thought would happen as an 11 year old. I witnessed, you know what I mean? And it was something so severe that every night when I went to bed for all of my at fucking from the age of 11, all the way through until as a reason, I thought life was a survival or you live or die. It is. That's the only way I knew. It. I literally was watching people get killed. Like, you know, it was bad shit. Like it just, it, it's hard to explain, you know what I mean? And so that puts you in a mindset where you're in defense mode constantly, uh, it makes you a horrible person, truthfully, is what I use as an excuse for, I guess, why I did what I did and all that other shit. But I don't know. I just come tune with myself all because weed opened that door for me, just experimenting and understanding why I couldn't take it in because I had so much bad shit going in my head. You know what I mean? And then I started changing my my vibrations, man, is the best way I could say it. I, I'm on a different plane now. Like, I'm just about the past being the past was that. And like, that was, like I said, clearing the closet. All the skeletons, well, that was the main one. And if you understand the past of the past and you're only about what's the present and the future, then you're going to make it much further. And all I'm looking forward to is all the good to come from all the bad that has happened because you can't enjoy any good without bad. And those who have seen the worst of the bad, well, they know the worst. You know what I mean? Because of all that I've seen, I'm able to hit a lower level. Like I'm able to hit uh, emotions that most people don't even know exist. I mean, the way that I describe this best is PTSD is a world that people cannot see. This is a world that I live in every day. I've seen things that fuck my entire view of life up entirely to where um, everything is impaired. You know what I mean? Like, and it's been a long time like that. And um, it's uh, a lot of people don't know uh, that life is like that for a lot of people. And um, so, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally understand. I understand, especially when you're that young and that those things happen. But the thing is, is that also as shitty as those things are, they also help mold you and take you, push you through that journey, you know, to get to that next side and mold you to the person you are today. Without right. what happened then, would you be where you are today? You know what I mean? Would you be exactly. the person you are? No. Sometimes you're put through those things on purpose because yep. – just to you know sometimes you're on a certain path and you have to do something you have to go through something like that to change the outlook at the end of the like the light at the end of the tunnel and i think that may have just done that for you and now you have found sound. that you know that that relief in in, in cannabis which you have clearly turned in such a, to a, a, your success story man at this you point. know what it does the most it allows me to see people not a lot of people know what it's like to be so hungry that they have to eat out of a trash can you want to know the pain that it feels to be that hungry? I mean, it's painful. It's really fucking painful. And there are people out there who still live that way and think that they are not seen, but people like me can see them. And that's that level of depth that I was talking about. Not a lot of people know what it's like to be trapped at gunpoint in stuff that you can't get out until literally you were told you can get out your entire life. Damn, or not you're just whenever you grew up and you decided to do things allegedly and stuff like that to be trapped in things. You know, there's a different world of pain motherfuckers don't even know exists. And that's why I feel like I can reach these people and talk to these people differently. There's a lot of fucking people out there are fed up and they've been through a lot of fucking pain. And they think nobody fucking sees them or I'm right fucking here to tell you that I see all of you and I'm trying to be part of this and I'm trying to get you guys to get on this YouTube shit. I'm trying to change everybody's lives. And if we come together as a community, motherfucker, like there is no stopping this. You know what I mean? 100%. I mean, you couldn't have said it better. It's exactly it. And 
I think, you know, I couldn't even say it any better. You clearly have uh, a voice of reason. I, you know what? And what's crazy is that you call your, your big show on Sunday Astro Church. And it's funny you call it that because the way you're talking it out, you sound like you, you're preaching, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, it's almost just perfectly fitting. Yeah, it's fun. It's so weird how all this had just played itself out. Like, I couldn't explain to you like how this all came together. There is no explaining it. The fact that I had the space shuttle before I started YouTube and all this other shit, like this was my personal office. This is where I came to literally trip balls and give clients the best fucking experience where they were offered beverages and everything, full refunds on products, all this. I went above and beyond. But if you go to that level of shit and you learn that fucking degree, I mean, look at it this way. Elon Musk says the best businessmen you'll ever meet in your life are fucking drug dealers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Isn't that some funny shit? It's fucking no. ironic because he's also one of the smartest men on the fucking planet. So it's kind of crazy to think about his opinions and how, and I'm, I'm just saying, because people who really hit certain levels, well, it takes a certain type of fortuity, like, or just the mentality to be able to do that. You know what I mean? And it's a structure and it's being modest and honest and being real and like holding prices, giving refunds, being that motherfucker that will get the stuff you can't, you know what I mean? And so not to encourage anybody to do that. It's not needed anymore. You know what I mean? The world's changing. What I'm encouraging now is the opposite. What I'm encouraging now is for you guys to utilize this time, this time of it becoming legal, this time of it being like, the craze of america you know what i mean this is your time to i guess submit a resume by starting content creation you know what i mean so was that something you like when did you decide this was going to be the route you were going to start taking was doing the content creation um when i was sitting in my grow room doing a lot of work constantly and watching all these videos endlessly and at times understanding that people weren't even saying things right and why and i was like Bro, I'm going to try. I'm going to do this. And it, it hit me earlier about all the benefits, about like all the medicinal. Right. But I knew to myself, whenever it went legal, whenever it fucking went legal, I was going balls deep. Why? Why, though? The truth of everything is I've got children. And uh, it like I knew that I had to get out of stuff because it was eating my ass alive. Like I go to bed every night. Right. And I would just literally like think about it nonstop. Like, dude, oh, my God, my children are literally all that mattered to me right why, yep. why am i risking this any longer why like why i can't do this like if the, if if literally i got arrested i just couldn't do it like my children would have to grow up without me and i just never could bear that thought mentally and so what did i do i took everything i've ever made in like bitcoin or all this stuff i invested everything because i mean i i was a welder i had prestigious careers before this i left all of this shit for chasing my dreams and all that you know what i mean but uh, welders make really good money too that's a good job I did. I was making over 200 an hour, you know, with oh, yeah. and everything like it was real shit. Like I was going all over like Callaway, Fulton, nuclear power plants that you could think of that are like, you know, commonly known that I can speak of. They're definitely badass places to make a lot of fucking money, but they're very dangerous wow. jobs. And these skilled right. trades, they require a lot of schooling and shit. So, you know, like I was in school for quite some time for all that shit, too. You learn a lot, though. You learn about the value of a dollar. I could fucking tell you that much when you're carrying 200 pounds of weight, climbing ladders nonstop, literally Fuck yeah. stroking every time I step outside type shit <laughs> because of the times. Like I've been in every situation, man. It's so fucking crazy to think about. I've literally worked at Tasty Freeze. I've worked at Cardo Largo. I've pushed shopping carts. I've done all that shit. I've walked the streets. I've ate out of cans. Like here I am now. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like anybody can change what they're doing if they really want, you know what I mean? Yep, one hundred percent. And that, how did you even get so like deep into this? Like, so you made the decision you were going to do it, but like the growth has just been outstanding. Do you, like what do you what do you test to that? Like, what is the what do you think is the trick or the or the glue that's holding it together that's pushed you quote unquote me to the moon? Technically, <laughs> you know, to outer space. Uh, real, being real, the one like literally. Like nothing I'm going to say is something that I don't truly believe myself. I say what I say at any point I could rebuttal anybody's bullshit, like not literally anybody's, but my point being like, I get the knowledge to the degree I do like, so that I can't be, you know what I mean? Like I, I I'm obsessive about learning. Um, God damn, I went off. Dude, those bong hits hit me. Give me a restart. Start again with that question. Do you want to, you want to take a quick break and come back in a minute? No, no, no. Those okay. bong hits hit me. Just I forgot what we were Maybe talking about. you need to about. take another one, that's all. All right, but what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, uh, welding. Oh, no, no. Why I get into it and how I that's got right. to the moon. 
That's right. Well, I got to the moon. Okay. That was the last one. <laughs> I dive deep, okay? Like, all right, so check this shit out. I'm I here. Used to, I used to mow lawns, right? And I started. What the fuck? After this. Right, check this out. Hold on. I feel like I got to hit I gotta hit with you. Damn. I need my thinking juicer. So, all right. I was like, man, I want to make some spare money. I'm laid off at the moment because I was a millwright and all this shit, right? Okay. And um, I started thinking about it. I was like, I bet I could start mowing lawns and using my hustle skill like that I had at the time, which I wasn't saying nothing. I was just like, I could hustle shit because selling shit to live was what I always did. So when I started mowing, I applied myself to that. I really started figuring out how to do things and dividing the money equally with people who were helping me and going on the side of the road and finding lawn mowers and figuring out how to rebuild them so that way I could flip them. And I remember there was one week where I made almost $10,000 on profit wise, if you would look at it this way, because oh, of the trades that I did as a young kid. But the trades that I was doing, I was taking lawn mowers and pressure washers, rebuilding the engine, selling them for literally, and I was getting them for free, picking them up off of Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, things like that. And after I would do that, it would just come together. But I learned not to sell shit. Don't sell shit. Instead, use it as tokens. Find people who are looking for combination pairs of things. If you want a pressure washer and a lawnmower, lawnmower, and I've got both of them, but I happen to want a fucking riding lawnmower, and you just wanted the push in that, come up with deals to navigate your way to what you want. Well, I ended up with the end of the week with a Skag V-Ride, and it was like a 2012 at the time and shit. You know what I mean? Which yep. at the time was like nine thousand something dollars. Like there, it was like nine thousand six hundred or some shit. I was way out of my element. I was flipping that for a fucking Dixie chopper. Now I'm telling you all this shit because this translates to everything. The better that you get, like the more that you do it, the better you get. Yeah. So I was doing yes. this with everything. I was learning about Starrett, Stabila, machinist equipment because I was a machinist. I was learning about the most fucking uh, what is it? Price retaining. Uh, things that I could buy in these industries. And I was hustling them to the people that were working with me. You know what I mean? Hey, like, so that's that's the key. You are just a natural born hustler. When you have nothing, and I mean nothing, you find ways to make money. There is always, I could sell a fucking red popsicle to a bitch in white gloves. It makes not a fuck. <laughs> this is my life. My <laughs> life has depended on this it. one ability to sell shit. And now I'm finally in my fucking zone because the one thing about me is observe, adapt, and improvise. Now I've observed, I've adapted, I've become what everyone is. It's time to improvise. It's time to flip the fucking table and show people what I could really do. Within, what, 11 months, I'm putting out the same content as some of the highest out there now. And I'm extremely excited about it because of the level of dedication that I've got. I don't stop once I get going. You know what I mean? Also, the quality. You know, like I played one of your videos at the start of the show. And... I just like, and I've watched a bunch of your stuff, and like, just the absolute quality is fucking cinematic. Because I'm a big, I'm a big stiffler when it comes to like audio, video shit, yo. Know? So when I see something like that, I'm like, yo, this dude's got it figured the fuck out. I don't know if you're doing editing or you got someone who knows what the fuck they're doing, but holy shit, nailed it! Like, fucking this your videos me. are dope. This see is my yo? point. If you guys believe in yourself and stop finding in the bullshit of like. You can't do it or it's something that's out of your reach. And you remember that I'm a guy who did all of this and came from absolutely nothing. This is something you can do. And most people, my point of doing all this, like I've strategically underlined all this shit. All right. Cosmic Pilgrim sits next to me. He is doing all this on a cell phone. You're going to watch as the quality goes up as I begin to completely teach him. So if he can do it on a cell phone, you guys can do it on a cell phone. And a lot of the top content creators out there do a lot of this stuff on their cell phone. You can do a lot with a little. And I just didn't know at the time that, you know, there are a couple of tricks that you can make your camera better, like 60 frames per second. And like uh, instead of like Ultra HD, do the FHD or whatever the fuck it was. Switch those over on Samsung phones and it'll change everything. You'll have a lot more coloration to it. It's badass. But if I'd have known that, I probably wouldn't have bought the first camera, which was the one I'm using right now is the ZV-1F. But all of these things that you can learn. Like they're all readily available online. Like this is all I self-taught and this is under. All right. So realistically, I've been doing Adobe Premiere Pro for three or four months now because I used Filmora up until I learned Prima or Premiere, which Premiere oh, is shit. cinematic okay. quality shit. Yeah, so, it is. I, I use both and I know Filmora is definitely like the, uh, mm -hmm. it's like the more entry level. That's what to. I found out that I could actually do this with. That's why I took Cosmic Pilgrim and I was like, here's how you do it with your phone. 
okay, here's Filmora. This is what you're going to want to buy, which is a one-time fee of $80, which will last your whole lifetime. Where Right now it's that way. It might change in the future when it gets bigger. But what I'm saying is that's an application you can use to edit all of your videos that you take with your phone, and it will literally explain everything for you. But it is so simple that within the first night of me tinkering with it, I realized, oh, my God, I can actually do this. And I, if I could make myself give myself the goosebumps, you know, in my first couple videos, which at the time I had a low fucking, you know, it was a low threshold for me. But my point was I could do that and I could actually see myself and portray these videos that I'm trying to see. Oh, my God, I'm going to break this shit. You know what I mean? And I hit it hard. Right. Filmora was that for me. Filmora was the opening. And once I felt like I hit the end of its abilities, like I could do everything I needed to. I was talking to my buddy a corpses and he's like, yo, dude, it's time to step up the camera get this one, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, also let's start with Adobe. And I was like, all right. And you know, he's my buddy. And I'm like, I gave him my word. I'm gonna try to do it. Right. I did not. I tried a little bit. I gave up so fucking quick on Adobe. It was not even funny. It took me a week to learn how to upload a fucking video. This shit's not fun. This no, shit Adobe is so work. much more difficult. It it, it does I'm take still work. that shit. I have no issues. Like I am figuring stuff out that it takes twelve years to do in college courses to be able to do, and I am doing it because I'm dedicating myself and I'm not letting things distract me. I keep one thing in mind, and that's my children. That's why it's easier for me to get up here each and every time I go live. That's why it's easier and easier is because I am seeing their life change. I am seeing. What I'm saying is like before this shit, before I really hit go on this YouTube stuff, life was where it was, man. My guy, like I had been trying to get out of things for a long time and I was finally at the end of that tunnel, but I had seen so much. It's just like people lose their lives constantly out there over what, when you can do it this way. And that's what I'm saying. I got out of all that shit and fuck, man, you get it, man. You get it, right? <laughs> of course I get it. I get it, but I, 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 I'm on a different level from you. You know, you, you have definitely gone through way more than i have for by any means but i understand to come up from very little to having to learn and teach yourself everything like i have learned how to do all this shit how to mix all my own audio i learned how to because i didn't have money to go to a fucking studio and i wanted to be a rapper i taught myself how to use adobe audition you know what i mean i taught myself how to use cool edit back when it's cool edit you know i taught myself how to do all this shit like it just yeah everything you know i gotta i learned how to use the sony i got a sony zve 10 i learned how to use that yep. shit you know unreal I mean? unreal you the know? difference right no like I, I went from a webcam to this i mean look at this setup is ridiculous once you learn how to do this it, it like i want to glow when i think about it it's so fun to think of what i'm actually capable of doing and i myself the person i never imagined being able to do this is doing this right now that people get excited when i come on their show i think of myself as shit still like i'm still the scum stain of the earth you know what i mean like literally that's why my head is pounded into me from literally a life of you know like just making myself that, you know what right. I mean? In order to be the hardest of the hard, you know what I mean? You have to be able to stomach anything that you could see. Like you have to be able to put yourself in that state of mind. That's what I've seen life as. And now I'm just like, wow, you know what I mean? Like you got something like this to get excited about this threshold of like what I can do on there now though, man, people like I never thought I could, but here I am just really devote yourself to it. Learn how to I mean, do it. It's you went from nothing to that. You're working with all these companies. You're doing all these giveaways. You're helping so many people every month. It's, it's, it's out of control. <laughs> you really do crazy. have like a church community, man. You, you just are like, you are the preacher and people love that. They follow you. They eat it up. And that, that's what like really when Don told me about you and I had heard your name and then I really went and dug deep. I was like, this guy, it's gonna be something crazy one day i believe that too somehow some way like it's just insane because what i've grown to understand is like holy shit like there's a window that somehow everybody's missed that is the only one that i've ever been able to see is like y'all are the ones making this happen. i'm looking at the comments right now this whole time i've been reading them i love you guys y'all are awesome that's the fucking thing that a lot of people don't see but why why is that they, they don't see that it's because a lot of people like I'm not going to say a lot of people, some people are trying to be real, but it's not something that they've ever had to really bleed for fight for this type of thing. This is what I said from the beginning when I started this. I'm coming from my goddamn throne like period. I don't care who is out there. The thing is, is in this world before YouTube, I was a goddamn king and I still am a fucking king and I'm going to come for that goddamn throne period like no matter what. 
you're going against somebody who will do anything. Like You don't know who the fuck I am type shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to compete when you've got someone who's got that much drive. You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard to compete against Dude, that. you that could have been that could have been the promo for your main event match at wrestlemania right there that was impeccable well, it's something it, i told everybody i want to assume the same throne in the legal world that i have as the underworld you know what i mean like that's what i want allegedly and that's, and why 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 it's about here's why the entire time i did all that i realized something power was how you did everything right Right. Power was this. Power was that. And I watched all these other people get power and what they did with it. I learned exactly how to do this YouTube without even starting it yet was not to go for power, not to go for fans, not to go for any of that bullshit. Go for friends, go for the community. It's not about power instead of you for once going for the power, which I'm so fucking done with and no longer want. All I want to do is figure out how I can change everybody's lives from this point on. Using all the knowledge I've consumed, all of these horrible paths I've taken, all these paths I've taken, I want all that knowledge to lead you guys to the right fucking direction. I want it to all be for something, you know? Yeah. I, I, you, I, this, this is what I'm saying. I see you now when you're, like, realizing yourself. Like, you're realizing that this is something you really could do. I'm wondering what it's going to be like in like, you know, a couple of years when you realize that you have made it like when you got into the top in mowing, I literally became what most people became in a decade in less than a year in YouTube. It's the same thing for now. Like it's because I'm doing something no one else is doing. I'm actually holding my fucking word. Like I'm being true about it. Well, no, I'm not saying anybody else is doing. I'm saying obviously all the successful people are holding their word. And that's why a lot of people who aren't successful or, you know, having issues is what I'm kind of referring to. A lot of people don't look at themselves and say, hey, am I actually here for people or am I here for myself? Do I want clout or do I actually want to like behind the curtains help this dude legitimately? I think he's a good guy. Well, I'm trying to bring people all over everybody's channels because a lot of people aren't aware what it is to take to make money on YouTube even, which is 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. But one episode of Church of Astro can get you literally how many watch hours. So if I can get that to convey to others, so when I hop on someone's live or somebody's podcast and they're not monetized, but I can get that type of average to your channel, guess what? That's another fucking person who is now monetized, making money, giving it, uh, giving it their all. And if I put a tent in your hands, that's another fucking person who's right by my side. And guess what? I'm making a galaxy and every single person in this galaxy has a role. The guy who sits next to me is going to be able to help with a lot of stuff for a lot of you guys who are doing this in your basement with smaller environments and smaller lights and things like that. Then the guy who is doing everything in the background space napkin, he's going to be great for all of you who are going to be in apartment complexes or small areas because I want him growing with small tents like two by twos, two by fours, things of that magnitude. And then I myself am going to be piercing the veil of everything above, which is going to be the 12 by 12 grow room with over 60, thousand dollars invested into it i have the receipts there's an entire chest next to me of them don't even fuck with it i'm here i bought everything new for real like what i'm saying i sold my bitcoin bro like i was about that shit you had a bitcoin yeah like i invested in myself i said fuck all that shit bro like all right so what i did was there was one point where doge was skyrocketing and shiba anu and all that stuff right and i was dick riding that shit first time in it i made like 5700 fucking dollars and that was the biggest thing I ever did, right? First second I made the money, I already had money because I was doing my I was doing my thing. You know what I mean? I bought my mom a side by side because she deserved it and she was a great mother. You know what I mean? And so that's just kind of it's fucking I took all that and I said, fuck it, dude. I ain't I ain't, I'm not gonna ever make enough money doing that to do what I want, which is actually change people's lives. Cause if I had money, I've already made my money. If I had like actual realistic money, I'm gonna break this fucking world. You know what I mean? I'm gonna change shit, like for real. Hell for yeah. Me. But it's um, I invested all of it into myself instead. And guess what? It worked instead of investing in coin, instead of investing in all that. I invested everything in my fucking children in the ability to give them the future by staying out of prison, staying alive after somebody who's seen so much and what really happens with this world. And maybe I could change everybody's who knows, because. A lot of you don't understand that you can get out of what you're in. It's all about your mental state. If you're literally working a dead end job and going to every day dreading it, what the fuck's the point of life? No, get away from that. You can change that. There is a way. And hopefully, just hopefully, 
whenever YouTube it really does start changing because, well, weed is going super fucking legal and everybody right. really starts making money, you already have that platform. Yeah, you're not going to make a fuckload off at the top at the beginning. You're not going to really get out what you've put in. Obviously, I haven't yet, but it will pay out whenever all of a sudden all these motherfuckers that you see in the future are very rich. And all the sudden, I mean, watch like dope as Yola. Y'all ever see him? I yeah. do research. I know what I'm shooting for. And by yeah. end game, I know what I want. Dope as Yola is a success story. He is a success story from someone who came from nothing, but his his icon is pushing tree. Ironically, that's what I believe in. You know what I mean? Not anymore. I'm just saying, like, you could change your world with just believing in yourself. You don't have to go to this everyday job. I mean, realistically, like. I'm not pushing anybody toward anything negative, but I am going to say, do check this out. All right. So $2,000. If you divide that by 16 is $125, correct? Yeah. So a lot of people know there's 16 ounces in a pound, ironically. Well, if you were to divide that again, I'm stop dividing even. If you take the 125 and realize that the average ounce goes for $200, but give a modest or fair price of 150 then most motherfuckers are not going to realize that if you leave enough meat on the bone, other motherfuckers are going to bite off of it. There's eight people at a table, pass that turkey leg to every motherfucker. Then you could dip in all their pockets, get good at that. There are a lot of levels that you could do with that. I'm just saying, but either way, if it's 200 each, that's 3,200 per P. And with that being said, you're profiting literally $1,200 each. But that goes further. There are things like concentrates. Like, this is the funniest things. Motherfuckers don't even understand. People are out there flinging that shit for 150 0 And that shit sells for 108th. There are eight eighths in one ounce. That's $800 for 150 in invest. I'm just saying, like, jokingly. Like, these are things that people were doing. They were grabbing these types of numbers and they were thinking to themselves, hey, if I taught this the proper way and instead of making money, I instead only made 100 per P. Why? Because I couldn't fathom somebody was making so much money off of moving, you know, all that and like only a hundred each. Well, if you're selling a hundred a day, what's the matter? Because you just made how much? Ten grand. You know my point? Like that's the world that. So math is pretty important to go ahead and learn that shit and all these. If you're going to take that route, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying like, you know, <clears throat> lives yeah. can change. Lives, lives can change. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Your life is just an amazing story. I've. Had so many questions I'm going to ask you about, you know, growth. There will, will be, I and, believe firmly one day there will be a full on fucking documentary. I swear on everything. At least a book, at least like, a book, like a New York best bestseller. If people no only question. fucking knew what it took to become, if people only knew what I had to go through to even be in front of you today, like they wouldn't believe it. Like even getting into this, finally starting to hit success levels on YouTube and literally feeling you like you have a gun to your head. Like you couldn't even keep up with content because you were obligated to do stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like the world's changed for me. Things have changed now. I'm finally there and I'm ready to explode and just fucking help everybody I can grab in their path. You know what I mean? Like anybody I can help. You're right here trying. How many podcasts have you done? You're giving it your fucking all and you're doing awesome. So what's my obligation to you right now? Ironically enough, I have an extra two by four. Ironically enough, you said the words gorilla tent. That's what I've got two of. You have to have that in my eyes. And I was with, uh, I'm not even going to bring it up because I don't want to just fucking, I'm not doing this shit for hype. And I don't want you guys to make clips of this shit. I don't want you guys to shout me out. I want you guys to take it and run with it and make me proud with it. You know what I mean? And somebody said they needed something on a live I did uh, the other day with somebody. And I just gave my mind, like, why? Is because he needed it 10 times more than my ass would ever fucking need. I'm a spoiled bitch. I don't need all this shit. Maybe I should give it away. Maybe I don't deserve this shit. Maybe I have. Maybe this is my fucking karma. Have you guys ever seen My Name is Earl? I really strongly believe in that shit. And I really believe the only reason I'm here is because I. After the statute of limitations is up, why do you, I keep having to stop in my conversations? Because I know there's a statute of limitations. But one day I'm going to be able to have a guy on my show who at one point in time, allegedly I kidnapped and broke his arm. And I want you guys to see my friendship with him now and what we've done with each other. And like, what you know, because I, I found him that. like he literally fucking approached me at a bar after I met Maywiggle. And he's like, you know who the fuck I am? Because, OK, I approached him. I said, hey, do you want to join a pool league? We needed a person. And then he later came up to me or and he didn't later. I'm fucking I get nervous with this shit. But because I know I got to watch my words. Um, allegedly, I was saying, hey, I needed a guy in my pool league. And he looked at me and he's just in confusion he's like you even know who the fuck i am I'm like no dude i don't i don't know who you are at all but like 
I really need a guy. Are you like level five up? That's what we're looking for. Right. <laughs> he was mad. He told me, you kidnapped me. You broke my fucking arm, dude. He's like, what the fuck? He was getting so worked up. I walked away. I was like, what the fuck, bro? So I'm like, man wiggle. And I'm like, I don't know what just happened. This dude's like insane. Like, I have no idea what he's talking about. And I literally didn't on my life. Like, I had no idea. Later that night, laying in bed all day, I had thought about this. What the fuck is he talking about? Couldn't figure it out. It fucking hit me. I really did forget. I wow. uh never mind. I allegedly like I <laughs> freaked just out. Me. I freaked out. I literally cried. I don't give a fuck if you judge me. Fuck you. Like, I don't need your approval. Like, that's what I'm saying. People who judge people are pussies anyway. But my point, I, I fucking cried. I felt bad. My point was like legitimately that fucked up in my head. I've done so fucking much wrong that I didn't give a fuck. And I didn't even know. Remember hurting him physically hurting a person. How fucking bad do you feel at night after doing that shit for a whole fucking oh, I mean, I Couldn't like, even imagine. So I fucking found him. I found him again. And I fucking literally apologized. I took him to dinner. I fucking, he was amazing. We were great friends. It blew my mind. And there was another person that something similar happened with. But what I'm saying is after the limitation, something like that, I would love to show people the difference that's made in my life to actually have a friend like that and to um, have done what I did and what it changed. And now my only fucking path is to only help people because I've done so fucking much wrong. Uh, a lot and i want to fix it i want to fix it this is my chance this is my way to be a father you know what i mean like absolutely 100 but that's my kids a, have to respect me 100 percent. yeah dude i yeah you 100 percent. and they're gonna see that you know obviously yeah. they're they're gonna they're gonna see that there's no doubt about that not at all but at some point you got to realize that you only can fix so much you know what i mean mm. like you got at least in my eyes because you know you want to make sure you can keep you don't want to get distracted from the main goal. You know what I mean? Right. So and there's a lot of different ways to go about that. But I mean, you just, it's just an incredible story. You're absolutely right. hundred percent. And that grind and that's and that struggle and everything that you talk about, that you're so passionate about that's pushing you through this and your children, of course, are just, it's, I just, there is no ceiling for you whatsoever. As long as, long as you see that, that's what's most important. I do. That's what we have to have. Why? I mean, Dude, there's like militia in real life, hopefully, you know what I mean? But the concept of it has to be applied to YouTube as well. I mean, there can't be some entity getting so powerful that no one could dethrone them. But if there's a thousand YouTubers that have over a thousand subscribers that work as a community in the atmosphere, call themselves the galaxy. If I help that many fucking people become a YouTube channel, somebody growing, self-sustaining, things like that, that have a voice, that's a lot of motherfuckers that have a voice, right? Like that's a lot. That's a, a lot. that's an actual voice. You can't rebuttal a thousand people with over a thousand subscribers. There's no the person has to submit and listen to that. We create a power from that. Hundred percent. And speaking of giving people a voice, I want to make sure the, the the viewers know you are more than welcome while we, while we still have them to call in if you want to call, call in, in. Ask questions about grows or life or whatever. It's eight six zero. Three eight four seven one one zero. That is eight six zero three eight four seven one one zero. I'm gonna throw the number on the screen right now. Uh, feel free to call in. You know, you guys all have a voice. We all see you in the chat. I know there's a lot of you chat right now, and definitely, uh, we're definitely accepting calls. So don't feel shy. Definitely oh, call no. in. As you can see, uh, he's an open book. So we're gonna keep it going for a little longer, for sure. Uh, of course, Lady J, can I call? Yeah, anyone's welcome to call. If someone's on the air and you see them call and let them finish and then the next person calls in because I only could do one at a time. I'm only one man. Dude, I would love someone. to hear from you guys. I want you all to know if you are worrying or wondering if you want like, no, dude, call me. Let's talk right now. This is your chance, dude. I'm, I'm a homie. Let's go. We're people. I got you, bro. 100%. Exactly. Exactly. So how long have you been growing for? Speaking of. Uh, three years. Oh, really? See, I would have guessed you were doing this for a long time. <laughs> Nah, my father grew my whole life, but I never learned anything from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it was at the time I didn't need that knowledge. But when I decided, when it went legal, okay, so it went legal, bam, that's when I did it. There we go. All right. Uh, to be blunt, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, APZ, it's Lady J from Massachusetts. What's going on, guys? Hey, Lady J. How are you doing today? 
I am fabulous. I am fabulous. I've been watching TV for a while. It's not my first call in. But I noticed that you guys were talking about just internet presence, especially as a weed entity. And I actually have a gripe I want to talk about. Um, You know how some people are just in it, like you said, for the cloud and in it to be like a can of weed celebrity type of uh, thing? Correct. Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty disgusted. There's a entity here in Massachusetts that has made some videos of him smoking out of turkey, like smoking out of a, you know, a chocolate bunny and all that stupid, you know, stuff. And honestly, this week he did something that I find absolutely repulsive, which is, is in, uh, endanger a wild animal. Oh, he fuck decided, that shit. Uh, oh, fuck. For video and for clout, that it would be okay to put stickers all over a freaking snapping turtle. Oh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's pretty stupid. I thought you meant like hurting. I was like, first Me off, too. let's get him hurt. That's my point. If you hurt animals, I want to fucking hurt you, period. You're a pussy. Anybody hurts an animal, I hope you fucking die. I don't give a fuck. Well, Come check me on that shit. But anyway, I'm talking to them. You know anything about like I'm not an animal Those expert. Turtles but I did learn about they're turtles right. and their shells are like their skin. So are imagine they? if you put an adhesive or something that's like burning their skin just to put a sticker on it. And he didn't just like put it on there. He like made sure it was stuck onto it. You know, and it showed it in the video. And I I'm just repulsed by it. Like, dude. So why would you do that to a turtle? Just for a video, you know, it makes you look stupid. All right. So how do we fix it? That's what we got to look at is like, let's first look at the, like what it does Are do we have enough of a debate for it to be where like, is it all right? So have you looked up the effects of stickers being on a turtle shell and what harm it could cause? And if we do lead that it can causing harm, then that's what we have to hit people is the actual facts. The only way to make a difference rather than talking is to actually look it up and find out. So maybe we can even do that. Who knows? We can make a difference. We can find out because truth be told, if it does hurt it and I've got a reason to hurt him, I'll fly out there and kick his fucking teeth. And like, you know, that type of shit. Like, let's make a fucking difference. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah. I can't do that shit anymore. I'm a dad. So that's it's right. so you know, okay. weird. We're not doing that life no more. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so weird. Trust me. I still think about it all the time. Just like, look what I can do to you. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God, I can't do that anymore. Holy fuck. You know, my kids need me. It's it's kind of. Either way, it's just childish. You know what I mean? Bullshit. There's yeah. ways to get likes and, and, and whatnot on the Internet instead of bothering wildlife. Even if it yeah. didn't hurt the turtle, you're still bothering it. You know what I mean? There's still no reason for you to be, you know, so doing anything to a turtle for likes, for Jesus sake, yeah. or any animal for that, right? You know? Right. But, um, it, but it, if, if you want to do something for likes, do something stupid to yourself, you know? Do something fun. There's, right. You know, I, I just don't see the point in... Because the they have nothing to go off of. That, they have no going on with people. And yeah, you would think this person's nice. a young person. He's actually not. He's older and, and you know, should be a little more wiser. Oh. Yeah, so I hear you. yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know if we're the right people for that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know. Anyway, that was my that was my gripe about what's going on here Thank in you. uh in in Mouse Hole Land. So. Yeah, leave the turtles alone. That's leave the uh, turtle alone. <laughs> turtle, turtle. You guys ever seen uh, what was it? Master disguise. Turtle, turtle. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> turtle boy. Turtle. Turtle. Yeah, that's a whole still- other situation, but. I uh, look forward to watching the rest of the show. Thank you guys for letting me check in. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have to do like a part two. Like we didn't talk about nothing about growing. I had so many questions, but I'm running out of time. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, the show's been going for almost an hour and a half now. Oh, fuck. Yeah, two people. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Easy, Dolphin Can Can. What's up, Don? Don! There he is. What up, buddy? The way Astro and I got connected is, dude, he is everything he claims to be, man. He is all about community. He used to support me so much. I was like, man, if this guy, you know, likes one more post or writes one more day, I got to reach out to him. And uh, within a few text messages with him, next thing I know, him and I were on the call together. And, man, he's, uh, he's top notch, that's for sure. Well, thank the fuck out of you, good sir. I think of I think of you the same way. Why did I call? Because we, we love you, Todd. We yeah, understand you know, we're a lot alike. We, we we all support each other, in, you know, indefinitely. So that's what we got to do, my guy. 
We appreciate you, Don. Yeah, right on. Well, You're a game changer. Out out Dude, Don's so cool. Love Don. See you at the next church, buddy. I'll see you at the next church, my friend. Hopefully, we can <laughs> give away some more of those. Oh, you know I got you. Fuck All yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah <absolutely. laughs> Thanks, Don. Later. Northern Scrogger in the chat. What is up, boy? That's Troy. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I love this man. I love it. Oh yeah, it's been dude. It's been a crazy night. I, 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 we need to do a part two. Please, can part we do a part two? Send it. Yeah. <laughs> All whatever. right. All right. I gotta get to it because now I gotta go put the kids to bed. <laughs> Understandable, my guy. I feel you. I, on that. You know, I would love to do this one more time and get yeah. you in here and finish this the right way. I'm open tomorrow night. I'm pretty bit. Well, actually, hold on. Uh, what's, We're only no. do Thursdays. Oh, uh, okay. So. Maybe, maybe one of the ones in July we can get you in here. Okay, we'll get something scheduled. All right. Listen, Bye. No, you are so real and such a open book and amazing. And I just want to say thank you so much for everything, not just because you tried to throw me a tent, but because you've literally you've been goat. You've been goaded tonight. Your story's incredible. Your passion, you can feel it as you talk. And I can understand why so many people gravitate towards you. So I just want to say congratulations on all your success. Keep keeping real. Keep being yourself, bro, and keep helping people because you are just doing a phenomenal job. I appreciate you for saying all that, man. Thank you. So keep it, keep, you know. Hey, thanks for having me on, too. And of course, listen, it's been my honor, honestly. And make sure you just remember, you always keep those kids right in front of you. That's, that's the end game. Indeed. Also, I need you to send me your P.O. box and all that stuff afterwards. So that way we could get all that taken care of. All right. Thanks, listen, appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Y'all, make sure you shout out. Shout out. Make sure you follow my man on YouTube, Untrained Astronaut. Get up on there. And Instagram. And Instagram. Same thing. Untrained one, Astronaut. Man. Hell yeah. And make Thanks, sure man. You, you, you keep up because this content is unlike anything else out there. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. I, just, you just, you're amazing. Thanks again, bro. I appreciate